So it's about seven o'clock in the evening and I've done just over six and a half thousand steps of the 10,000 daily steps that the app on my watch says I should aim for. But why 10,000 steps? Where does that figure come from? And what research is it based on? The answer is quite interesting. We're told that 10,000 steps is what we should be aiming for if we want to stay healthy and fit. But there's no scientific basis to that number. It was just a good marketing slogan. It started when Japan was preparing to host the first Tokyo Olympics back in 1964. In the run-up to those games, the population of Japan became more interested in being physically fit. And to capitalize on that, a Japanese company called Yamasa Clock made a pedometer. The Manpo Kai, which literally means 10,000 step meter. It was devised by a man called Dr. Hatano, who just thought that 10,000 steps might be a good target to aim for. But it wasn't based on any scientific research. It was a catchy name, the device sold well, and the number just kind of stuck. Dr. Hatano wasn't the first person to come up with the idea of a pedometer. In one of Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbooks, there were drawings of a step counter that he'd devised hundreds of years ago. Because the figure of 10,000 steps is so widely believed to be a target we should all aim for to improve our health and fitness, some research has now been done and the findings are interesting. Walking 10,000 steps a day does improve your health. It improves your mental health, heart health, and it can reduce your risk of diabetes. But you don't have to walk 10,000 steps a day to get those benefits. To do the type of research that I mentioned in this video, you need to be able to problem solve and have a good understanding of the STEM subjects. That's something that today's sponsor Brilliant can help you with. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you the STEM subjects in an interactive way. They have courses like foundational math and data science, where they teach you how to learn to think and how to problem solve interactively on a wide range of different problems so that you really understand the underlying concepts. Take a look at this lesson on the center of mass, for example. Here, you're trying to balance mobiles. You can shift around the balance points and immediately see how the mobile balances or doesn't. This is in Brilliant's newly updated scientific thinking course, which is full of interactive exercises that let you experience the principles of science firsthand. Brilliant has recently upped the interactivity of their platform. And as you work through the interactive problems, you really do deepen your understanding of the topic. There are hints and explanations for when you get stuck. So you really can learn in a way that suits you. For viewers of this channel, Brilliant is offering a 20% discount on an annual subscription for the first 200 people to sign up. Just go to brilliant.org slash Python programmer, and I'll put the link in the description. And a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. Thanks, Brilliant. Recent research from Harvard Medical School has shown that when comparing women who walk just 2,700 steps a day to those who walk 4,400, the risk of death in the latter group, the ones that walk more, is significantly lower. The risk of death continues to fall as the step count rises until you get to about 7,500 steps a day, and then the effect wears off. The study only looked at women, so we can't say whether the same results would be seen by men. So if you're going to aim for a number of steps per day, 7,500 might be a better target. But step count isn't necessarily the best measure. According to research by Marie Murphy at the University of Ulster, the speed of your walking is important too. Walking slowly will reduce your risk of cancer, but it takes brisk walking to reduce the risk of heart disease. 30 minutes brisk walking a day is enough. And you don't even have to do that all at once. You can do three sessions of 10 minutes each. And actually that's considered even better for you if you split it up like that, because it reduces the amount of time you spend doing something else. that's extremely bad for your health. I'm doing it now. It's sitting down. Research has shown that if you sit for more than eight hours a day, you have a 59% increased risk of death compared to people who sit for just four hours a day or less. Better get up. There are even more benefits to walking. 
Research from the University of Texas has shown that people who walk fewer than 5,000 steps a day are less able to burn fat the next day. And a buildup of fat can increase the risk of heart disease and diabetes. I've come inside now because it's too dark to film outside. I've done my steps though. So to recap, you don't need to do 10,000 steps a day. Aim for at least 5,000. And if you do your walk in the morning, the light that you're exposed to will reduce your melatonin levels, which can help reset your body clock so you might sleep a bit better. And a morning walk can also help to increase your serotonin levels, which is good for your mental health. This is for information only and does not constitute medical advice. I'm not a clinician, so if you're thinking of changing your health regime, speak to someone who is.